Welcome, 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 welcome back to another show of Art Me's Life. So if you're like me, I know y'all wish that this was a monthly show, but I'm going to be honest with you. I have a million things going on. So that's why we kind of do it by monthly to give y'all the space of wanting to come back and to see what type of artist we bring. So if this is your first time tuning in, thank you so much for tuning in to this wonderful event. If you have been tuning in to this show since the first time we've done it, thank you for coming back. By all means, feel free to share this with your friends. Um, because we have a very, very, very special guest um, tonight. All of our guests have been special, but this one I'm very excited for because of how I met this special guest. So um, real quick, do some housekeeping rules. So if you are on Facebook, feel free to share this event um, through your Facebook channels and everything of that nature. If you are on YouTube, feel free to share this YouTube stream on your social media networks and handles and everything of that nature. The one thing that I encourage everybody to do while looking at this event is please use the comment box. Use the comment box. What I mean by use the comment box is I always have a lot of questions and I know you, the audience, have a lot of questions. So feel free to ask questions so we can bring them up to the screen. And that way we can have our special guests answer your questions that you may have. Um, this is going to be unique. And the reason being is because when we first started this show, the whole idea from the show, if guys didn't know, so we have an event here called Art Meets Life in Fayetteville. And with Art Meets Life, it's a open mic event where we have special guests come we do a Q&A with a special guest before they get into their featured set, whether they're doing poems or music or comedy or anything of that nature. So with everything going on with the, the pandemic, we decided to bring that show virtually. But I wanted to do something different and strip down that whole event and just have a conversation with an artist for an hour. So we're not going to ask them to do anything special that they normally would do. We're not going to have them do any voiceover <laughs> things. We're not going to have them do no poems. We're not going to have them play no music. We're just going to have a conversation, and this gives you the chance to know the artist and everything that they do in their medium. So if you know about the first one, we have um, my best friend, which is like a big brother to me, Tony Todd from Final Destination, Candy uh, Candyman, and everything of that nature. Um, the last one we did was with a painter, spoken word artist, and HIV activist by the name of Tough Love. So this month's artist, I am very excited for because when I first heard the name i was not familiar with the name and i'm going to be completely honest with you because it's not often that i look for particular names and certain things that i've looked for at certain points in my life but when i seen the resume of this guest i was like i'll be honest with you, i was like damn she's done a lot so a lot of people know her for a lot of the voice acting she's done and let's let's give you an example bleach she was the voice of Rangiku, which was one of the most slept on characters in that anime. And there's a story arc with that particular character we can go into that I'm not going to do at this moment. Um, a lot of people know her as my Valentine from Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, Yu -Oh fame, but the world knows her as OG Nurse Joy from the Pokemon series. It's, oh, yes. OG is what I meant. OG. So I'm going to quit talking. And without further ado, we're going to bring in our very special guest. And I'm going to make sure I say her name right. This is Megan Holly, Hollingshead. There you go. Hollingshead. Woo! Woo! Wow. What a kind introduction. Thank you. Thank you. That How made me feel all, all warm inside. I'm going to be a pain to live with for a while now. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're going to be perfectly fine. How are you, by the way? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Um, LA is very hot and smoky. Uh, yes, I've seen the pictures. Yeah, it's a little it's a little tough, but um, you know I can't complain. We are out of harm's way. Um, yeah, I mean it's just a these are really weird weird times, right? Yes, definitely. You know, you know what? It's funny because me and my um me and my wife, and this is like the ongoing running joke for 2020. We were talking. We was like, we're just waiting on one more thing to happen so that way we could say we cleared the Jumanji game board. Uh, <laughs> So oh, it's it's ridiculous. So um, so for the people that's out there, once again, um, please feel free to leave comments. Please feel free to ask questions to this artist. Like I said, this is going to be like two artists talking, because even though I did my studying up on Megan before the show to ask her some questions that y'all may all need to know. When we were talking, planning for this, she had asked me because she asked me questions. So some of y'all know me already, but some of y'all may not know me. So we'll get into that whole thing later. But 
we're gonna start this off with um icebreaker questions. So Megan, are you ready? I I think so. Yes. Okay. It's, just, it's easy icebreaker questions. Easy icebreaker questions. So can I call lifeline? If you need to, yes. <laughs> we, we will reach out to the um we will reach out to the audience to see what they can help you with. So okay. first icebreaker question. Yes. What is your favorite word and why? Come on, that's too easy. I, I mean, am, I, am I allowed to um Who's our audience here? Are there? Um, no, you can say whatever you need to say. Like it's uh, it's fine. Fuck! 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 <laughs> fuck! Fuck! Fuck the fuck off, you fucking fucks! Fuck! <laughs> I mean, what? That word is just so good. Fuck! Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck! Yeah, I said my. You know, I grew up a. a I went to 12 years of Catholic school. I was very, I mean, I never had a, a teenage rebellion. I was a very good kid. And uh, when I was like in my 20s, I was driving somewhere with my mom and someone cut us off. And I, I had lived in New York for a long time and someone cut us off and I went, what the fuck? And my mom goes, <gasps> Megan. She goes, well, I guess that's how they talk in New York. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that's I'm going, I'm, okay, so before I go to the next icebreaker question, I have to thank you because, like, this is the third show we've done since we started this, and I feel like this show brings <laughs> out the best of people because it's like, <laughs> like asking a question, it's something that no one expects from somebody. Like, oh man, I'm gonna have to send you like the previous video so you can see what I'm talking about. What is um, that? It's the best word. Oh, uh, I got you. So, um, your least favorite word and why? Um, uh, it's two words shut up. Okay, so why shut up? No one should ever tell anyone to shut up, ever. That's just so cruel and so, um, duh, bleh, bleh. Yeah, I can see, yeah, I can see, I see it got to you already. Yeah, let, yeah, let's yeah. Why would you, why? No, there's no reason. Never shut up, never, ever, ever. And you can say, hey, this isn't the right time. I need you to be quiet now. Shut up. That's the most violent thing you could say. Got you, got you. So questions are rolling in, by the way. So I'm going to put them up here soon after we get out of the icebreaker question. So um, next icebreaker question. What profession, other than the ones you do, would you like to attempt and why? Well, I wish I were 100 years younger. Um, and I wish... I, I There's so many things. Like it, when I was in college, all I wanted to do was get out of college. Um but now, now uh, this is why I get why like senior citizens go back to community schools. Like now I'm like, wow, why didn't I study math? You know, why? Oh, I wish I had studied like um, astronomy. Ah, that is so interesting to me now. Um, if I did something different, like first of all, the arts, I'd love to, I want to draw. Like I might actually go to take more art classes just stuff like that. I'm, I'm super into quilting, like not as a, as like making quilts, but like as an art form, I'm into fabric arts. Um, uh, but what else would I want to do? I want to be a ballerina, should have stuck with my dance classes and, uh, oh, an economist, economist. Wow. That's an interesting job. It's not just about numbers. It's about like people's behavior and, uh, trying to predict stuff like that. And I don't think it's possible. So that's kind of fascinating. Nice, nice. So um, last icebreaker question. Uh -oh. um, if this last one, it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy one. And I always preface this because I don't know everybody's religious beliefs or what they do and what they don't believe in. So if yeah. you believe heaven exists or if you believe in there and believe in a higher power, yeah. what would you like to hear that higher power say to you when you have passed on from the mortal plane? Ah. Uh. Well, golly, the first thing I would say is, whew. <laughs> um, and I remember, I remember hearing this from inside the actor studio. Um, I heard Shelly Winters say this and I've, I resonated with it. She said, uh, she wanted to hear God say, good job. And uh, that's what I want to hear. Good job. Or, or you did good. You did nice. good. Nice. So that's the icebreaker question. So I'm going to bring up one oh. question that somebody brought up, um, yes. which I'm going to consider an icebreaker question. So yeah. this comes from a Bill Spade. I believe that's how his name is. 
He said the Stanley Cup finals are here. <laughs> Who would you choose to win it all? Stars or lightning? I don't know, Bill. I don't want to disappoint you. I know how much this means to you. But lightning as a thing in the sky scares me, and stars do not. So I'm going to go stars. Oh, nice, nice, yeah. nice. Where uh, who do they play for? LJ, what, give me some hints here. Say that again. Who do they play for? Stars, Lightning? Star, um, I think Lightning is Tampa Bay and the Stars. Okay. I cannot remember. It's been a while since I've watched um, hockey. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, yeah. I, I stopped watching hockey when I was younger because I'm, I'm originally from Detroit. I stay in North Carolina now, but I'm originally from Detroit, so I'm always going to be a Red Wings fan. So yes. when um, Federal and uh, the, old, the old regime left from there, I kind of quit watching. That's yeah. kind of how it was with football. Like once once Barry Sanders retired, I was like done with sports. Done. Yeah. Thing. So that's me. I guess so I, gotcha. I was a Mets girl. I like the New York Mets, but then I moved to LA and I kind of a Dodger fan. Kind of. Yeah. But um no. Al Leiter and the Mets, Mike Piazza, who was originally LA, then a Met. I, yeah. I just can't keep up anymore. So you're going to be seeing questions pop up and comments. I'm afraid of lightning too. Yes. <laughs> for life. Yes. So, yes. So somebody said Dallas. Yeah. I thought it was the Dallas stars, but I didn't want to say it. And somebody come yeah, from my stars. head on my own show. So I was kind of like saying, I don't know. Yeah. So, thank you. Larry. Yeah. Thank you guys. So I think, I think we're good and ready. Like I see more questions in here, but I'm going to try to bring them back when we start talking about the particular topics that some folks have asked already. So Megan Holland's head. Tell us, uh, so I know a lot of people may know your story already as far as like where you're originally from and where you live at now, but yeah. if you could um, tell us a little bit about your backstory as far as where you were from and stuff you used to do as a kid, and then I'm going to start building up from there. Excellent. Okay, so I'm from LA or the LA area. I'm from the Valley, um, from Canoga Park, which is Super Valley. Um and I lived there uh, when literally when the song Valley Girl came out and I thought mm. it was cool. I thought it meant it was like cool to be a Valley Girl, not that they were making fun of Valley Girls. And so um, we moved from there to Ohio, uh, Columbus, Ohio. And that did not, that really didn't sit well. <laughs> that was not, <laughs> that was kind of a cruel joke. Um, I, I went along with things, you know. I was always like, okay, pretend everything's fine has been my life motto. <laughs> Just <laughs> pretend everything, pretend it's normal, pretend everything's fine. So I went to Ohio, but like I wouldn't um, acknowledge that there was snow. Like I wouldn't wear snow boots. I wouldn't, uh, we oh, had a wow. choice. I went to a school with uniforms and we had a choice of wearing pretty ugly uniform skirts versus even uglier corduroy maroon pants. And I was like, nope. Not wearing those, even though it's snowing. I'm going to wear a skirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in the South, so like the South would never understand being in the Midwest or just up North where you yes. have to walk to school in like three feet of snow because they don't want to cancel nothing. So like in North Carolina, um, especially Fayetteville, Fort Bragg area, they they will cancel school and everything if there's like okay. two centimeters of snow. Well, they, there's no snow trucks, right? You don't have plows or salt. We, we have snow trucks, but they come out rarely. Like, it, like if it really hits, but like if there's like two centimeters of snow, they just they shut oh. down everything. Ah, everybody panic. They, they shut down everything. Everybody goes to like Food Line and Walmart to buy milk, eggs, and <laughs> or, like bread. Like that's it. They literally clear the shelves with that. Like it's the apocalypse now. Like, <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but it happens. Like right. totally. No, I get it. I get it. So, uh, so yeah, I moved to Ohio and um, uh, I've told this story before, but I was obsessed with Raiders of the Lost Ark, right? Did you grow up on adventure fantasy? Was your... Yeah, so I grew, I grew up on a lot of movies. Um, there's a lot. So the funny thing is I actually saw um, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom first. Uh -huh. then, then I seen Raiders of the Lost Ark. Even yeah. Raiders of the Lost Ark was the second one. And yep. then, like the whole time, I always thought that was part two. But then I got mad because how to <laughs> back to like chronologically how the movies are made. But then I, I then I realized that Temple of Doom is actually really the first movie because it's a prequel to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Right. So, so I was like, I've been watching it right to begin with. So right. So it was okay. 
-hmm. Yeah. So I got so obsessed with that movie. I just wanted to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I just read everything I could. And I read a book that was like the making of the movie. So I was like, oh, oh, they make movies. They don't just like appear. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. Yes, Bill. Totally. Um, uh, so I thought, oh, I want to make movies. And my mom made me go do theater at my high school. And so, oh, another Ohioan. So, uh, and I thought, what, what on earth does theater have to do with making movies? But okay. So I joined the theater department of my high school. And that's, I mean, that was kind of how life changed. You know, it's like, oh, there's this in the world. There's art. There's, there's this whole other part of life that I didn't know about. And I had one teacher there, I had, I had amazing teachers, but one teacher in particular said, we study English because that's the study of life. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what a weird thing to say. For, and literally like it kept going through my brain and I didn't understand it. And it took a, like maybe a couple of years for that to sink in. We study oh, English because yeah. it's studying life. And it's so true. You're studying books that people read about, people wrote about life. And, uh, and same with theater and same with movies. That's what, I mean, you know, there's action, adventure, sci-fi where you just kind of want to escape. And there's um, an element of it that's teaching us who we are and teaching us what's important to us and how to be in this world because it's not a given, you know? We yeah. don't wake up in the world knowing how to be in the world. Um, and so we need these reflections from poetry, from movies, from other people. Like we need ways of interacting with each other that aren't just, hi, how are you? Fine. Um, to help us be human. Which, exactly, which is definitely interesting that you brought that up to segue to the next question. So um, voice acting is one thing, but before you, um, I believe you got into voice acting, you actually... So I want to hear like how you actually got started in acting to begin with, because I know you have a a plethora of theater accomplishments you've done as well. So um, what got you interested in acting to begin with, um, aside from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah, well, I, um, you know, it's funny, like in retrospect, I can see other forces that guided me into it. But at the time, it was just, um, it was just one step at a time. I wanted to be a part of this thing. I knew that I loved art. I knew that I loved uh, the community. Like theater is such an amazing community. You're with this group of people who all have the same goal. Um, there's so many powerful relationships backstage, on stage, the director, the lights, the this, the that. And um, it feels so good. I remember having a dream about um, being with some friends who were in the theater and we were all having a picnic together. And I woke up with such a happy feeling. And I thought, yes, it's that. It's the community that I love. And I, you know, I was an only child. I was, uh, I think I was always craving this sense of like a giant extended community. And that's what theater is. Um, so I was really into that. And I started off backstage and and uh, a couple of people were like, why don't you just try? Why don't you just try out for a couple of shows? And they did, and they were great. Um, I had so much fun, but I, I was canny enough to say, I need to work and I need to earn a living. And it's really hard to earn a living as an actor. So I put it aside, you know, I was just like, no, you're gonna find something else to do. And so I, um, I went to film school, to, not really sure what I would do, like director, administrator, producer, I didn't really know, but, um, something in that. So I went to film school and spent almost all of my time trying to get into my friend's films. <laughs> I still, I loved making film, but it, uh, I almost switched to the theater department halfway through. Um, and I found out I would, I had to start all over. Like I would have had to start over as a freshman. I was like, mm, I don't love school that much now. Uh, but I did get a visual and performing arts minor just to kind of satisfy that. And, uh, yeah, so I, I, I was like, oh, you know, I'll just get into my friend's films and try to get out of school as quickly as possible. And I did. And then I moved to New York, got a job in administration. I'm very good at administration. And uh, 
bit by bit, I just woke up to the fact that what I really wanted to do was act. Darn it! <laughs> <laughs> it funny? Funny? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. No, there's plenty of people like every acting to every good acting teacher in the world will say if you want if you can do anything else besides acting, do it because it's a hard life. Um, and so I just accepted that I would have a day job and then be an actress at night. And so all of my theater credit, that's not true. Some of my theater credits I got paid for. Most of them were free at night off. It's called off off Broadway. <laughs> and sometimes they have to pay you tokens. Subway. Well, they don't do tokens anymore, but uh your subway fare round trip but that's all i have to pay you yeah. and uh that was it i did it for love i could i could relate to that um because as far as like with poetry you know, on the other end like you go to these open that's mics it. and like you you never know like i think with any type of artistry or the business of any art you do you kind of <laughs> never know it's like you doing it for the love because it's something fun you want to do or you had an ambition like I want to do something like this as a career, but I'm not sure yes. about it as a career. And like, even with um, poetry, for example, we go to open mics and you get that call where somebody say they want to feature you or do something. But then like with us, we had to, there's been numerous trips um, back when I first started where I had to travel like miles for a free show, not knowing about the pain, but then I did it for the love asking what people would pay. It would normally be like $25, $30 gigs. This is just good for gas fare. But I, I definitely, I could definitely relate to that because uh, oh. as an artist, it's like I gotta do the day job, even yes. though this is probably where my where I feel my calling is. I want to keep this day job because it's the most secure. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And but there's the passion, right? You mm -hmm. can't, you can't just be like, well, I can't do it. Like there's something driving. Oh there's yeah, something driving that, and it's so important. It's and the world needs it. Yep, you definitely. Um, so I'm gonna try to put some of these comments up there. So people may comment, and I've been I was putting some up while you were like talking. I didn't want you to like lose your focus. So I um, message cool. you share out of love of yeah. the art. We, yeah, you do, you yeah. do. Um, shout out to Ed Owens too. He's actually an um, artist here in Fayetteville by the name of Spirit Wolf. Um, definitely oh, a beautiful. Beautiful artist. So, so um, cool. Hillary, I'm gonna go back to Hillary Johnson. She says it is for everything you was mentioning earlier, and you guys don't get enough praise or credit because I I did theater once in high school as a stage hand. So I definitely know nice. that, that life. <laughs> and, yeah. I also did, and I also did show choir, which was like Broadway stuff. So yeah. the, old, the old me, I don't do that. I'm, I'm doing poems now. I don't do the singing and dancing as much. No. So yeah. Old me, yeah. old me. Uh, <laughs> so um, I'm going to, I'm going to open it up to you. Cause I know I've been like going, going tick for tackle questions. So I mean, by all means, feel free to ask me a question before I get to any of my questions. Cause I'm pretty sure you probably have some. Well, you're producing now, right? You've got this, uh, what is it? S E R. Oh yes. S okay. So, um, thank you for that. so the, the South is, 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 um, the Southeast regional North Carolina poetry festival. And you're producing are, that? Is this yours? Is this so, your kind of, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to get to it. So basically what happened, there's a poet in our area known by known as Neil Ray. He is the quintessential godfather of Fayetteville poetry. He's been doing poetry in this city for like 23 years he literally built up the scene here and one year i think around 2012 he got together with me and some artists and said i'm tired of fayetteville north carolina being the city in north carolina that doesn't get the recognition it deserves when it comes to spoken word because here in north carolina especially in the the mass market of spoken word poetry and slams when it comes to north carolina everybody knew Asheville, everybody knew charlotte everybody knew greensboro Everybody knew the Raleigh Durham area, but no one knew of Fayetteville. So uh -huh. he said, you know what? Let's try to put together our own like weekend of poetry. So we did it um, back in 2012. And it was just supposed to be like a weekend thing. And it was a lot of us that put it together. So after we did the first one, I mean, there was their good, it was as good and their bad. And um, after the first one, everybody was like, okay, it's good. We don't got to do it no more. So mm -hmm. I took it upon myself like, well, maybe this is something that we can keep going. Yeah. And it went from being a weekend thing to now a four day festival we've been doing for the past eight years. So this is year Whoa. eight of the festival. Wow. Um, and we just recently got um, a city proclamation from our mayor um, Monday. So it was. It's, Congratulations. It, thank you. It, thank you. So it's been an exciting time. And I mean, uh, me, uh, my planning committee, we've been putting in work and all the businesses that helps out. So it's a lot we do. So I'm um, like, for example, how we met, which I kind of alluded to earlier. 
yeah. we do this thing called what's known as a nerd slam, where normally with the nerd slam, what happens is people would get together and let's say my nerd category was knowing all of the episodes of My Little Pony, and your nerds, <laughs> your nerd, and your nerd uh, specialty was Pokemon. So we would have a panel ask us questions on our particular panel. So it's like it's like March Madness for nerds. So it'd be like Pokemon versus My Little Pony. And then in between that, we have people do nerd okay. films. So we, yeah, like we actually do it. At, we've been doing it at comic Con. Like this year, we had a lot of comic Con set up because we started doing it here about five, six years ago. And it, and it blew up big. We've been doing it at conferences and everything. So this is going to be the, the big year. But then everything got, got the lids cut off because everything's happening. So we got people still calling us, asking us if we're still doing it. Of course, we will. I, had yeah. quite, like, I literally have a Rolodex of questions from a lot of categories going on like movies and comic books tv shows like we had yeah like we have a cat like one year i did it and we had literally so it was two people going to get going against each other one person did my hero academia uh -huh. and the other person did the whole movie franchise for the movie friday so friday next friday the friday after next and they were literally knowing all the questions we asked them like production notes what happened in a certain scene, what year the movie came out, and what we Wait, would so do. You did all the research to ask all the questions. Yeah, so like normally, so I always have a big book, but then yeah. I have a panel that, depending on the venue where we're at, as long as the Wi-Fi like wi is good, they'll just go look up the question from like Wikipedia yeah. real quick or certain sites. But I normally have a big book just in case. And if there ever was a tie, then I would get to ask them any random nerd question that everybody should know. But it would be like multiple choice or something like that to make it too hard. So so good. So, so yeah, it's it's fun. It's fun. Um, I definitely will have to get with you about that later. Um, wow. so wow. um, so I might ask you another question. Um, and by all means, if anybody's still listening, um, and that's watching this show, I see y'all are enjoying it. Feel free to ask questions because um, we're gonna start getting into some of the questions y'all asked about character development and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, okay. so we talked about your voice. We talked about your acting. So what was it? So what was the turning point? So uh, you you pinpointed like you wanted to act. So what was the thing that got you from going from physically act, like seeing you act yeah. to going to voice acting? Because I'm going to ask you a question about voice acting as well. Yeah. Well, it's not, um, it's not, there's no big story. Someone asked me if I did it. <laughs> a friend of a friend said, does Megan do voice acting? And I said, yes, yes, I do. Uh, I had no idea what it, I, I mean, I had a vague idea what it meant, but um so, and I, I think I had more guts then than I do now, you know, um, life is, life is life and it's kicked me around a little bit. I mean, I've had an easier life than a lot of people, but you know, I, it's harder for me to say yes when I don't know how to do things now than it used to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the time I was like, yeah, sure. I do voiceover. And, um, basically I had an audition and the, uh, uh, the director taught me everything I needed to know. He just told me how to audition for all these different characters. And one of them was Nurse Joy in Pokemon. And I booked it. And uh, uh, having that uh, just was a springboard into lots of other roles. It was for the company that did Pokemon was, back then was for kids entertainment. And they were doing like 20 other shows at the same time. Mm. So they there was a stable of us that got to do all these other shows. Nice. So I gotta go back to the, the guy. Go back to the comments real quick. Um, spirit, so the guy I was telling about, he's actually one of our planning committee uh, members. He said thank you for the shout out about the festival, along with um, Mr. Law Bullock, because they love that festival. So yeah. we were speaking about the Nerd Slam. Um, this young lady who's done the Nerd Slam and helped me do it said the questions are super hard too. Excellent. They are. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna get, I have to give her a shout out because one year she was one of my panel members and she literally did one for old school WWE. So like wrestling from like the past up till a certain point. Wait, she answered the questions or she came up no, with the questions? She looked up the questions. Yeah, she looked up the questions like what was um un like the Undertaker, what was his first his name when he first came out? Like stuff, <laughs> stuff, stuff like that. Like and I and I didn't realize it until like I seen the answer and I was like, you know what, that makes sense. I can't I'm not gonna tell nobody on here because I don't want them taking that and nope. end up my nerves I'm doing it. So wow. <laughs> and then like poetry, being a nerd. <laughs> yes, it does. Of course. You know, that's so. the thing about, like, I, I had done some conventions early on, and then I wasn't doing conventions for a long time. It just didn't, it just wasn't working into my schedule. And then I'm 
I was right before COVID, I was back to doing conventions and I forgot how much I love people who come to conventions. Speaking of nerds, um, I what a wonderful group of people, right? Like it's just, yes. it's the funnest, funnest thing. I get to be a nerd. Everyone else gets to be a nerd. There's no, um, there's no BS, right? You yes. just need to show up and be yourself. And uh, I've had more like heartfelt, sincere human encounters at conventions than than I would have imagined. Um, it's such a privilege to get to go to conventions. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you this Go question. Yes, I'm gonna ask you this question real quick. I kind of mm -hmm. heard someone allude to it, and I'm hoping it can happen. So once again, I'm in Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, I heard that the people for Fayetteville Comic Con are trying their best to get you here next year. Oh, so I hope can, so. I hope know, so. I love them so much. I, I hope so. I hope they can get the you. Nicest, here. coolest ever. Yeah. If not next year, maybe in the future. I mean, like I will. I will, yeah, I'll walk. That's where I met Veronica. That's where I met Veronica. Um, Excellent. Yeah, yes. I met her here. And like, she, we friended each other the first day I met her. Um, yeah. Like, hey, can I get a picture? She's like, yeah, what you do? And she saw a, a book I had came out with, which is basically a nerd, a, a poetry chat book with nerd poems like that came out. And I still need to get it to her. So, Wait, <laughs> so I got you wrote a poetry chat book? Yes, I wrote a, a poetry chat. I wrote a couple of poetry chat books, and but I have one that's that about I, nerd stuff. Nerd stuff. So like, there's a poem. Oh. There's like real life situations based around like certain things. So like, there's a poem mm -hmm. that talks about the pressure from the um the eyes of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Um, there's another oh, poem okay. that talks about interracial relationships from the mind of King Bowser from Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> 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 because, it can't, because, because that can't be happening without something already happened. Like, so that's like the whole, it's just a whole narrative I made. Oh, yeah. But yeah, just stuff like that. Um, yeah, yeah. I, so like, how long have you been, how long have you been writing poetry? And did you start by writing or did you start with a spoken word? I started with writing. Um, it's, so I've always tell this story. So to this day, my third grade teacher, um, God bless her soul is still alive right now. Um, when I first moved, when I first moved to the south side of um, a city known as Lima, Ohio, um, oh, there was a my the third grade teacher I had named my name is Miss Washam. She did what's known as curriculum fair like every year, and she was like, "Hey, you want to be a part? Just write a story." So I did like this whole six page story, like three pages was stick figures, the other three was like a written story, and I did it on Super Mario Brothers. Like Mario jumps down a pipe, picture. Mario sees a princess in trouble picture mario beats up the bad guys and saves the day picture in and she still has it laminated and everything it wasn't wow. until my fifth grade year when i actually started doing poetry but it was part of a poetry project um our yeah. fifth grade teacher was wanting us to like try to write poems and, like different styles of poetry and i was i literally was writing for a long time she said i need to keep up with it but what ended up happening was my senior year i ended up going into the military after i graduated and I kind of stopped writing for a little bit. And then I started picking it back up, but just doing it as a hobby, like on Black Planet and MySpace. So what yeah. ended up happening, so my last deployment, I had a chief warrant officer that wrote a book, a poetry book. Um, and he saw some of my writing and was like, hey, we should take these poems that you've been writing and just make a book out of it. And I literally took all the poems, um, used some of my deployment money when I got back, published a self-published book. And I went to an open mic and I was like, I'm going to, Go here. I'm gonna do these poems. Everybody's gonna love me. That was not the case because I didn't know how to perform at that time. So it was like, wow. I, it was like I can't read a poem about being in love when I'm up here saying I love her. She is the best for me. So it was like it it, 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 it come off right. So, oh my god, that's adorable. Yeah. So going to the open. First of all, wait, just to I yeah. can't. I. It's so not what people think of to have your who was it your chief. What? Chief warrant officer. Mm -hmm. Is who encouraged you in your poetry? Uh, yeah, and, I mean, yeah, nobody like, thinks that. Yeah, and like you were saying, like it's it's when you look at hindsight, um, twenty twenty hindsight on everything. Like some things happen in life that lead you back to certain things or lead you to certain things. Because when I was thinking about poetry, I was done with it. Like I wasn't thinking about doing anything with this. I wasn't thinking about trying to do a book. I was just like trying to live my life, being the military, and everything. But then just so happens I end up finding out about open mics in my city 
finding out, writing about stuff, finding out later in life that poems don't have to necessarily be um, love poems and breakup poems and hurtful poems. You can have fun with your poems. You can be creative with your poems. You can do nerd poems. So it was like all those things over the years like helped out with a lot. And uh, yeah, so man, this, this beautiful thing, beautiful thing. So um, we're gonna get to the, we're gonna get more into voice acting. We're gonna get more into, uh, but then we're gonna get to your characters. I know a lot of people wanna hear about certain characters on here. Cool. But there's something I did um, kind of skip over that I want to double back to. Yep. So we're talking about the arts and how you were saying like the arts is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how many people know and forgive me um, if this is valid or not valid anymore. Let me know. But um, we were talking about my festival, but you're a founder of a festival yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And this goes back to... Um how theater is such a community. So two of my best friends on the planet, um, uh, Martha Banta and Dave Turner, uh, was, really wanted to start a theater festival. You know, it's kind of a case where I was a really good hanger on. You, you, hang, you hang on to the right people and great things happen. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I just, I was like, heck yeah, I wanna start a theater festival, who wouldn't? So we, uh, we spent a couple weekends driving around to a, a couple different locations uh, upstate New York. We went to Woodstock and Woodstock was awesome, but our, our sense was kind of like, yeah, Woodstock already has a really nice artistic vibe. Um, they kind of have everything they need. And we mm -hmm. ended up up in Glens Falls, New York, which is right by Lake George, which is this gorgeous, um, gorgeous vacation spot. Glens Falls, it was sort of a rundown mill town. It had a, you know, a, a, so many small towns have gone through like industrial small towns, the industries close and kind of hard on their luck. So um, it somehow fit better. You know, it felt like, well, this is an area that doesn't have theater and doesn't have a strong arts population. Maybe we could bring something different to the area. Um, and we started off in a theater on an, on the lot of an RV park and, oh, wow. uh, and yeah, and eventually converted a Woolworth, an abandoned Woolworths, um, store into a theater. The first couple of seasons, it was just literally an empty Woolworths with, um, a stage and chairs brought in. And then, uh, over the 10 years that, Martha and Dave ran it. And at, the, at these points, like I was just kind of coming and going when I could. Um, it's like a proper theater now, like all built out. Uh, and I had the privilege of doing two shows up there as well as helping out in any other way I could. Um, fundraising, um, never stage managed, but like, yeah, fundraising, running around, cleaning dressing rooms, um, just being there, answering phones. <laughs> Just having fun. That, that's that's that is that is beautiful and is motivating. Um, seriously, that is like motivating because I think um, a lot of people don't understand like when you like the passion of everything. Like the fact that y'all did that is Oof. is like you said, an abandoned building, and literally years later now it's just on like theater. Like I don't. Oh yeah. That, like that's like if that's not a motivating story for like art and just life and what you love to do. I don't know what is so. Uh totally <laughs> like out of nothing just like boom 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 um it still amazes me um again i was never i never had the business sense of it mm -hmm. um but so i i probably couldn't have envisioned as much as other people did but that's why it takes a group you know um that's why i don't do things on my own <laughs> yeah. like, so. try to do it alone and it just doesn't Got you. So I'm gonna go. So, so I, for all audiences out there, thank y'all so much for asking like all these questions and commenting. We were trying to get. I'm getting them up as fast as I can. Um, before we go to the voiceover work, because we know we want to talk about these characters. Somebody did just ask you a good um, question dealing with theater. Um, so question is from Jennifer. Theater wise, what was your favorite show to be a part of? <gasps> oh my gosh. Um, Actually, one that happened at that festival, at Adirondack Theater Festival, there's a, a play called Wit. Um, I forget who the player it is. Maybe Margaret something. Ed Edison? Margaret Edison, maybe? But it's about a woman 
a, a brilliant academic who's dying of cancer. And I played the nurse <laughs> who is not a brilliant academic, but just sort of a someone who's uh, uh, a worker among workers with a lot of heart. And uh, I loved it because the play is brilliant. It's very well written with a lot of heart. And uh, I loved it because of the people I was working with. I, I, it was my theater company and it was uh, the, the cast I was working with was so smart and so fun. Um, it was just one of the best, one of the best summers of my life. Awesome. Thank you for that question, Jennifer. We appreciate you. Uh, we had a comment about the, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> if you build it, they will come. Yes, yes. you're definitely right about that. Yes. All right, so let's keep this going. Um, speaking of essential work workers, Nurse Joy. Um, so Nurse Joy, um, apparently, and most indefinitely, I guess, would be the, you try, I guess for me, hearing about Nurse Joy is like, and I, I don't want to ask your thoughts on this because I don't know if you ever had this question. You may have. So everybody knows you for a lot of roles that you've played. It always comes back to Nurse Joy at some point. Yes. So which is it, it makes sense. I mean, Pokemon is like such a huge phenomenon beyond me, beyond you know, any of the original cast or the current cast. Yeah. So my question is, um, it's two, it's gonna be two questions, but I want to get this one out the way first, because it's dealing with Nurse Joy. Um, as an artist in your craft, doing voice act voice acting, numerous characters, um, at any given point, did you feel that because I, I kind of know the story. I think everybody knows the story as to why you left um, Pokemon first, the, the first after the first six seasons because of the move. But yeah. um, when people kept referring to you, possibly like that's Nurse Joy, that's Nurse Joy. Did you ever feel like at a point in your career when you were doing so many other um, gigs that you outgrew that character, only to find out that that character is you and you are that character in a sense? Uh, I never felt like I outgrew her. Um, I am still so grateful for that role. And, um, you know, that's interesting though. Like she, you know, it's not like Nurse Joy has a big story arc. <laughs> like, like, uh, <laughs> well, then she changed and she was a tragic <laughs> hero. Um, so yeah, I do do a lot more than say, your Pokemon will be just fine. But, um, but yeah, I mean, what's, yeah, no. Uh, what am I trying to say? No, <laughs> I never outgrew her. her. <laughs> She's great. I'm back in Pokemon Journeys now because after all these, yay, after all these evolutions, like she changed, her ponytails went up, her ponytails came back down. She's in a different dress. Now she's back to the original Nurse Joy and they're like, ah, just get Megan again. So, um, uh, and she sounds the same. <laughs> so, so it's awesome. And she's, she is who she is. Nice, nice. Yeah. I had to ask that question because I know, like, um, with characters, even with poets, sometimes, like, our like we write so much stuff and we do so much stuff, but sometimes our our the one defining moment that people always recognize us for is like one particular thing. So yeah. I had to ask that from an artist standpoint because I know to some artists they get tired of being tied out to like I've done so many things. Oh, I'm yeah. not with this person, I've done this. But, how, how does that feel for you? Like, if do you get associated with one of your works? Yes, I do actually. So, um, there's a poem I actually released a video for recently. So the poems actually the left, right. the left, right. Yes, the left, Ooh. right. And I, get, I just got chills again thinking about it. It's right, amazing. <laughs> Appreciate yeah. that. Um, and that poem literally bothered me for a while, only because I wrote that poem coming off of a horrible summer, a bad breakup, and it brought back a lot of feelings and stories not only from of myself but other people i've met that went down that road after the military so i did a poem it literally was one of the best poems i've written if not the best poem and i'm not saying that to be um like egotistical like it's just yeah. how people just feel about that poem and i literally got tired of it because it's like everybody wanted to hear that poem so like when i would get featured in certain places everybody wanted to do that poem so i stopped doing that poem i would do it in competition but when it came to doing feature sets, I would not do the poem because I was like, I write more than just this poem. I have more than just this poem. But then I had to sit down and think about it. And, and I think the opportunity became more apparent that this poem was needed more than for just me. Oh, when, oh yeah. 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 I started doing work with um, the Wounded Warrior Project and then um, doing work with the VA. So it, 
it, it stood out more. I was like, I got to start doing this poem now more than anything because it's not my, it's not my, it's not just my journey. Um, like I thought it was it's everybody has went through this, especially now I had to remember the reason why I wrote it. So, yeah. but yeah, like, so that's why I asked that question. Cause like artists get tied to like artists get tied to certain works, but then some works you can just get rid of. Like, I'm not that I'm good with it. But then some works are just so powerful. You got to embrace it and live with it. Like no joy. <laughs> so, and you know, that's a good reminder. That's something it, it it's so hard to keep going some days as an actress. Like it's just, uh, I, I do a ton of auditioning and I'm like, how do I, how am I going to get this part? How am I going to get this part? And what you just said reminded me that, um, I have to keep reminding myself. It's not about me. Um, it's about how can I be of service? What can I do for others? What can I do through my work to, um, to give to others? How can I support the producers? How can I support, um, how can I even make the casting directors look better? You know, mm -hmm. how, and, and best of all, how can I support the viewers? You know, how can I make them, how can I make their day a little better? Got you, got you, got you. So, man, so I'm gonna let you know right now. So normally this show is supposed to last an hour, but if you're okay with it, I can go over. I can go over time because I'm controlling it. So, I'm, I'm, whatever, it's for you. It's I'm I'm fine. So I'm making sure you. I don't know. What, I don't know if you have anything else going on because I know your time zone is different. I just like kids, my family. You know how it is. A sippy cup, practically. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna bring up a question about. Um, so, let's talk about. We're gonna keep it on Nurse Joy, and we're gonna talk about my Valentine because, um, of course, my mm -hmm. Valentine from Yu Gi Oh, another fan favorite. Um, yeah. Those two particular roles, um, and it's kind of I guess go with all the roles you played. Yeah. What was the mindset um, that you came up with, or the, um, the creative ideas you came up with when you was when you wanted to voice these characters? Because I know you, they kind of have the outline of what the character looks like. So. Yeah. Um, what what's the art like what's the artistic mindset for you the voice actress looking at these particular pictures saying this is the voice i feel they need to have right for my valentine it was um you know she's sexy but i was gonna say you can't play that you can but uh it was more about the hand on the hip and the the chin and the the strength she was sexy know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was more about her getting her power out and the sexiness was more for her a thing of power um uh and of course like i don't get to choose on my own like i throw things out and they say that's dumb or you know, like, they'll be like, <laughs> um no seriously that they'll, they'll say things like what are you doing are you crazy um uh uh, so yeah, for me, it was power and swagger. Nice. Um, that was the, my Valentine thing. They'll also, I can't remember with her. It's been so long and they do this more in LA than they did in New York, that they'll play the Japanese and they'll say, you don't have to sound exactly like this, but you know, we're looking for this vibe. Um, this is what that actress did. And we're, we're not looking for that, but we are. <laughs> that's a, that's a comment. We don't want you to do it like yeah, this, but we right. kind of want you to lean a little bit that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. The worst gotcha. is when, like, I'll do something, uh, like the direction will say, uh, strong, independent, fierce, um, uh, really taking, takes care of her, puts her family first, right? Mm -hmm. And so I. I do the audition exactly, exactly that. And the worst thing that could possibly happen is when the director said, uh, yeah, but uh, yeah. And can you add a little bit more strong, independent, fierce and and doing and really taking care of her family? And I'm like, mm, I just did. <laughs> and he wants me to do something different. <laughs> you know? I'm like, mm, really, what do I add? What do I take away? I was really sure that's what I did. <laughs> That's <the hardest. laughs> So we're gonna go to some questions from the um audience because I was I was trying to get to this point because everybody's asking the questions way ahead of time. So I tried to like build yeah. up to it. So um first question because it deals with my Valentine from Hillary. So a couple of questions. How how did you get my Valentine or how did you get into the Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh group? Because to me it seems like a close group. Yes. Than, okay, yeah. So I'll let I'll definitely let you answer that question. Yeah, so the uh, how'd you get into the Pokemon 
uh, Yu-Gi-Oh group. It was, it was a very close group and it was, um, it's, which is not so true these days. It was a very closed group. Um, it, it, it sounds so yucky, but it was like who you knew because they didn't like, it was the late nineties and that's, there was no internet. I mean, there was, but it, that's not how things got done. It wasn't very democratic. It was like, um, Hey, this guy, Norman is casting this show and um, you should call him that kind of thing. It was also non-union. So there was mm -hmm. a small, there was a small group of us who were non-union and who, you know, um, could do that work. Uh, so yeah, so, and once people got in, we stayed in. Uh, once you got in, um, then they'd say, could you also do this? Could you also do that? Could you do this? Could you do that? So it was a very tight knit group with people doing this show and that show and this show and that show. I remember someone teasing Eric Stewart at a Christmas party that he was not allowed to be in any more shows because he was like every character in every show. Um, yeah, so that was a, it was kind of a special point in time where everybody was, the small group of people were doing all the work on all these shows. Um, the business has changed significantly because of voice bank and now auditions go to everybody. But I will say that in anime, it is still kind of a tight knit group. There is a, a certain, there is a certain amount of who you know. So you, you get in and you get known and you, you move around. Um, Anything you can tell us that is for new projects, just that I'm lucky enough to continue to work on Pokemon journeys. And uh, I gotta say, I got nothing exciting in the works. I'm lucky enough to keep doing small parts on big jobs and uh, keep plugging away, auditioning like a maniac. Nice. I have a question about that, but I'm gonna try to get some more of these um, fan questions real quick. Uh, real quick, just wanna leave these out there, comments. Talking about my Maya. Maya's favorite. She's such a bad ass. She and, is. She, <laughs> thank and you. Hillary also said her too because she liked the way she played the cards. Yes. Yes. She was not messing around. All right. So um somebody got so uh, I think you already I think you already answered her question because Hillary had another question about the um projects, which you just answered. But she said she but I will um put this up because of the other part. Um and wanted she wanted to be a voice actor, but don't have the equipment. So, what can you tell her as far as like what equipment she would need and what routes could she do in order to, I guess, go um, for that goal? I, I mean, in times of COVID, it's it's really challenging. Um, I think the equipment is last. The first thing is to invest in in acting. Um, uh, and again, in times of COVID, that's really hard. Uh, but yeah, as soon as you can take acting classes before equipment. Um, if you have a computer though, you can you can sit in on voice acting classes. I know there's people teaching um, teaching over over the computer. And as long as your computer has a microphone, you can do that. If your computer doesn't have a microphone, then it is really hard. It really is. Um, but there's stuff to watch. Certainly, there's videos to watch. There. There's um, who's got the website? So you want to be a voice actor. Um, D Bradley Baker, D Bradley Baker has stuff on, on his website. That's, um, that's helpful. Um, and for starting equipment, uh, yeah, a snowball mic is, ah. is fine to start with. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> there, you there you go. I had one to start with. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to bring up the next question, but um, my fr it's from a friend, it's from somebody um said something earlier, but the reason I'm gonna bring it up before um I get to it is because I kind of want you to so everybody talks about my Valentine, everybody talks about um Nurse Joy. I guess these other two characters, I guess, really were so much big roles, but to me, they played an important part of two animes I love importantly, one being Caster from the Fate Stay series, um, uh, which is basically so like creepy, yeah, basically. Well, well. I love the character, but the show itself is like Chrono Trigger on steroids. Because depending on which one you watch, <laughs> is the right story. You just got to pick which one you like the best. Which mine was Unlimited Blade Works. That's the one I always love. Um, but then Rangiku from Bleach, oh, um, yeah. because she How awesome is she. Say that again. How awesome is she? I love yeah, her. her story. Like her story is like one of the most awesome stories when it came to like the Soul Society arc and like. Um, I can't think of a character's name, but why he 
was with Aizen to begin with because of what he seen Aizen do to her when they were kids. So like it's I'm not gonna get too much into it. It's 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 yeah. I can't think of the name. It's like Aizen yeah. the terminal. Aizen was the main bad guy from the yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah but his right hand which is the guy with the squinty eyes. Um I can't think of his name right now. Somebody's gonna probably comment. But yeah, somebody needs to comment on that. I can't think yeah. of it either. But um Rangiku's story, um basically it was insinuated that he saw when they were kids that Aizen and a couple of other um people assaulted her. I, I don't go too much in depth with it, but they assaulted her. So his whole thing was growing older, he did his best to get close to Aizen in order to I try to know this. Now yeah. I gotta go back and watch it. Yeah, it's 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 awesome. I but, miss that or i've forgotten it yeah it's it's awesome like i love i love that um about it i hate that he died off but the question that um the guy posed is so cool which, which role or roles mean the most to you oh that's so hard because they all do in very different ways mostly because of um well uh, yeah they they all do in very different ways like rangiku um, I just loved how strong she was. And then I loved doing all the silly interstitials or the, the previews where I would get to be like, I'm going shopping. Um, <laughs> like to be able to do both of those was such a treat. And I loved working with um, mostly the director I got to work with on Bleach was Wendy Lee. And uh, so I have those fond memories as well. So I love Rangiku. I, I just, I, Every but every show has that. Every show has something that was really awesome as a character, and then something memorable about the the recording session. Like Caster, Caster was really challenging because yeah, she's an arch villain, you know. Yeah. But every time I I went big, the director Tony Oliver was like, "No, you got to keep this real, girl. Stop, you know, stop like overacting." <laughs> I was like, "I really want to overact." He's like, "No, no, you know, really." come back to me really evil. What can you channel? That's, you know, real anger and real pain and real hurt. And I'm like, Oh, this is hard. Acting is hard. I forgot. Um, so, so quick, so I'm sorry. Yeah. Quick, so quick question. But, um, fate stay. Did you do all, did they, did, did you do all three or did you just do um, unlimited blade works? I, can't I, I, thought they did, I thought they did three different ones. I can't remember. I don't no. have three stories, but I know unlimited blade works was the one I saw. I did, wait, I did, there was one that got released as a movie where I did not play caster. Okay, it, it was probably, was, um, I think it was Fate Stay Night. I think it was Yeah, Fate I did Stay Fate Night. Stay Night. Okay. Right? And mm -hmm. then there was something else that I did not do. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, cool. <laughs> I know all about my shows. <laughs> I'm no, the court jester, you, sorry. You, you not know. Look, I, I, I'll tell you this. I will tell you this. You um, not knowing about some of the shows you did or forgetting about some of it is the most humbling thing. <laughs> I promise you, because it shows you're human. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. I, just, I need to be my own PR person, and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you have another question comes from Lamel. Is there any character you wish you would have voiced? Oh, so many, so many. Um, I feel like I use the same example over and over, but there's so darn many. I, I just had an audition. Oh, I probably can't talk about it. I think I had to sign an NDA. I just had an audition, which I'm pretty sure I didn't get. And I'm like, oh, I really wanted that. I'll, I'll be able to talk about it when it finally comes out. And who knows? Maybe they'll, they'll, they'll it'll come back. Um, oh, there's so many. Sometimes it's hard to turn on the TV. I'm just like, click. <laughs> Why didn't they tell me they were looking for that? I would have done it. Click. Um, uh, you know, and I never even got to read for these, but all the, um, oh, what's Howl's Moving Castle? Um, oh, I just saw that. And and this isn't like, oh, I wish I could have voiced that. I'm, that's just like sheer awe watching. Uh, I'm blanking on everybody's names, but watching those performances, I'm just like, oh, there's that? People do that? Such amazing work. So I want to be that when I grow up. <laughs> Real quick, um, while we still, because I got a few more questions myself, and then I'm, I'm going to have to let Megan ask me some questions because I've been talking my mouth off. Um, <laughs> if you want to follow her, go to her Instagram. Follow that, 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 that handle right there. Go ahead, be friends with her. She may follow you back. Be friends. 
and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna keep that up for a quick second and get to another question. So we just talked about all these characters, um, all the good things. So I know you said you don't, you can't really say you have a favorite because so many characters you play have. Yeah, I see. You. Like we haven't even talked about video game characters because I'm not gonna even get it. To right, that. right. I said I'm trying to keep it anime because we can go to that whole catalog. But I'm gonna keep it anime. So, mm -hmm. and so I'm gonna give you four characters: Caster. Red Giku, Nurse Joy, My Valentine. What's one trait in those characters that you see in you? I'm evil, manipulating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, go, go, good time, have okay. fun. <laughs> okay. Caster, I mean, she, Caster actually had, it was a little bit of a stretch, but she did have a vulnerable side and she was hurt. Um, uh, Rangiku is brave, and I'm sometimes brave, and silly, and I'm often silly. Uh, my Valentine is tough and has a tough exterior, even when she's vulnerable on the inside. I can do that. I can play that game all day long. And uh, Nurse Joy, good old Nurse Joy. How am I like Nurse Joy? I fix broken things and giggle. <laughs> <laughs> nurse joy oh this is uh nurse joy plays my everything's gonna be fine card oh. everything's fine everything's always fine it's fine it's fine ah <laughs> uh, man i figured i had to give you that question um yeah well so i, I got let me let me let you have the floor for a minute too because i've been like i said i've been i have you've been asking all the questions you've been I know. But it just, I need people Wait, so people. how'd you get from Detroit to Fayetteville? Um, it was a long walk. No, I'm just playing. Um, <laughs> Detroit was cold. It's been military, really. Um, but it, was, it really wasn't supposed to be military. I so I had plans to go to college, and I was looking to go into college to get a master's, well, not master's, a bachelor degree in music theory. Because I was big on, I did a lot. So I did choir, I played sports, and I just loved dancing. So I did a lot dealing with the arts and dancing. Uh, yeah, I used to, yeah, man. It's a, you still yeah. dance? Not as much as I used to. Um, and that's a whole other story I'll get into in a minute. Um, but, and what ended up happening was I became impatient. I didn't think I was going to get to any college. And I think I put in like, maybe I think the low number of, of college applications, I think I put in like five or six and I got two came back and they didn't, and then they didn't uh, approve me. So I was like, you know what? So this is probably good enough for me to go ahead and just say, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and go into the military. I got a good couple of good friends that went into the military. So I ended up going. And then when I came home for Christmas, um, see my grandma, gave her a hug. She's like, yeah, you had a letter that came in um like after you left the go into basic training and it happened to be a letter from ohio state um university mm -hmm. and it was a full ride scholarship to ohio state for music theory so um oh my god oh my I, god oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god so i felt that i feel you a certain never way. Know, but you just never know right yeah because like i said at the you end of the day like, but it could have been something good and i'm not gonna say it wasn't gonna be something good but at the same time just, i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing now had i did that exactly. i mean i could have still been doing great things but I, I i've i've had a, a a very my life can be a, a a good hollywood movie if i wasn't really telling people the story but I'm, I'm happy doing what i'm doing now so i bet from the snippets i've got i'm like there's a lot of stories here oh yeah there's a lot um but dancing real quick so when i one of the first things i did after like starting to get into doing my poetry and a little bit of entertainment here in fayetteville i stumbled across um Crump dancing, um, which is like the big fade, like the big fab when the movie Rise came out. So for a couple of years in North Carolina, I actually, I actually was putting on the biggest um, crump competition in the state. Like there's videos of it. Like I can send you, I can send you the name to look up, and you'll see all the videos for it that people filmed over the years. And then, so I your start, thing isn't just like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Your thing is like. I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna set up a whole festival <laughs> like, to make sure everybody else does this. I'm a so I think organizer. I think 
I don't, you know, it's weird. I think I wear a lot of hats and I'm just so used to, I'm used to having an idea and I will try for the idea. If the idea works, I'm good with it. And I'll do it as long as I can. If the idea don't work, I'm fine with it. I'll mm-hmm. learn from it and keep going. Um, poetry has always been something I love. So I, I'm going to always stick with poetry and public speaking. Um, mm-hmm. As far as putting events together, like that event, I, I've already set in my head is going to happen next year because there's been too many people for that particular um, art form of dance, crump dance, because there's a big following in North Carolina in the country that I had talked to those people I know that still do it. And I was like, y'all know what? How how would y'all feel if after the pandemic, I bring y'all back here and we'll do this event for one night only? And everybody's like, just say the date. We there. there. So it's like, um, so fun. Yeah. So it's like, I'm looking to do that again. But it's just like always having that mindset of always wanting to make something happen. And I'm like you, community. I've, I've always been like, the mindset of community as long as it's like I could get I get something out of it, but the main thing is the people that you serve because like you can't be like you ever had the thought or somebody ever tell you like you're the the queen or the leader of the thing they're your domain, but you're like that's cool, but I can't be an effective leader or a good lead of something if one I'm not doing the same thing I would ask these people to do, and two I'm not ser- if I'm not serving them, then I'm not I don't need this position. So that's literally like the mindset I've always had. And I'm always saying purpose over popularity because as long as you know your purpose, it will oversee the popularity all the time. So Yes. Yes. Where did that come from? Where did that, where did that spark of purpose over popularity come from? Oh, good question. So at one point in my life here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I started to get what I'm pretty sure you've seen um, your numerous years of the business, the big head. So, <laughs> so <laughs> Nothing at a point. Um, and the the realization of that came. It was after an event that me and some friends put together. We did an event. I think it was called. I think it was the art acoustic. No, it wasn't the art acoustic. It was like an event we did. It was something like some big event we did. And after the event, like um, a friend, his name's Cartier. He was like, "Hey, man, we got a business meeting. We got to go to. Everybody's there. We got to make sure we're there." We get to the studio where we're at, and it's literally me, him, my friend um, named Dennis, and another good friend of mine that's an artist by the name of Yo- Yolanda Barnes, a.k.a. Yogi with two eyes, and it's just us. So I'm like, okay, where's everybody at? They're like, yeah, have a seat. We need to talk. So I'm like, okay. So literally they um, ran down everything I was doing. And like that was like considered conceited, um, bit egotistic, everything. And the the biggest thing I got out of that, like before he even st- before they even started, my friend Cartier was like, "Well, you have two options before we do this talk. After you listen, you can do one of two things: you can submit, or you can fight. Basically, meaning you can submit to what you did wrong and try and change it, or you can try to fight against it and don't change nothing at all." And when I think you have a circle of friends that literally care for your well-being and will tell you about that, it humbles you and it brings you back down to earth. So literally, that's where that oh, all started. That's literally where the purpose of popularity started. That I, I'm floored that you have friends like that. Oh, yeah. like we you care enough to not just be like, oh, yeah, he's got a big head. I'm not dealing with him anymore. Oh, no. Because at the end of the day, like, why would you, why would you put yourself around people that don't tell you that? Because, like, at the end of the day, you, you, if you, you think about it, like, Think of anybody that's always told you you did good in something all the time and do not tell you your mess ups. So that way, when people know you're messing up and the person does, uh, some random person say, hey, um, I think this is just an opinion. I think this could have been done different. And you don't take that feedback. And the first thing you like, well, it doesn't matter. I'm an award winning person. I did this. I did this. Cause like you can't live. You can't you can't you cannot live off of stuff you've done in the past your whole life. Like if someone says. And this ain't saying that you do this. So let's say if somebody was like, hey, Megan, um, I think that um, that role in such and such video game would have been a better role for you had you gave it more passion. And you just came out nowhere and saying, well, it don't matter because I've always nursed joy. And then it's like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's where Purpose of Popularity came from. Wow, that's so good. So, ah, that's so good. <laughs> So are you enjoying your talk right now? Like I said, I know this is not like your typical like kind of con. That's like, why I like it. That's so cool. And um, now yeah. I'm thinking, it's funny. Nobody ever asked me like what, um, 
what shows I phoned in. <laughs> they were like, are you ashamed of any of your work? <laughs> I don't know what I'd say, but I know there's jobs where I went home going. <laughs> like, oh, that, and that's the whole point. Cause like I said, I think, um, and like I said, like all the questions you've been getting so far, um, which I'm going to get back to shortly. They've been great questions, but I think like with a lot of people, they know you as, um, and then even with the promotion and stuff. And I'll be honest with y'all. Cause I'm a, I'm a victim of doing it. So like the hype up a show, you say, this is the person that played nurse joy. And like, they'll hone in on those things. And then sometimes the people will only ask you about, okay, where'd you come from? What got you into acting? What got you into voice acting? These yeah. roles. That's yeah. it. Like, um, I don't think nobody will ask you like literally sometimes, right. like, did you, when you woke up, when you woke up today, was today a happy day or was it one of those days where you struggled, but you made it through? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's like, yes. Nobody says that. Yeah. So LJ, was today a happy day or was today a day where you like woke up and struggled, but you made it through? So uh, today was a great day. Like, I'm like most of the days when I wake up and I feel like it's, going to be a rough day it's literally because i made it that way. I, I woke up with the intention of making it that way and i think sometimes that's what ends up happening um i got this life mm -hmm. that says if you wake up and give yourself a happy thought or tell yourself a happy thought then norm then 10 times out of 10 you're going to probably have a good day i mean some things you can't avoid if it happens because life is life but if you wake up already knowing that today is going to be a good day you claim it just claim it i mean it's true it's true. Thing. Yeah, but my day, like, I, like I woke up today knowing I was going to get a haircut because I needed a haircut. Oh, all and right. I had to have a conversation with friends earlier about the festival next week, and then knowing that I was going to do this with the intention of making sure you have a great time doing this show. Because the the thing with me, I'm I'm a stickler about making sure any guest I have on the show, I treat it like an actual house. So if you're not enjoying yourself then I feel like I did something wrong. So I always mm. try to make sure things happen that way, especially because um, this is our first time kind of like really talking okay. and music aside from when we um, became friends after Fayetteville Comic Con and kind of yeah. was just like corresponding through Instagram. So that, yeah. that's always my biggest thing, like going here with it, oh. going here with you and don't, don't, don't change you. Like, and I'll be honest with you, like the fact that um, you, you dropped the F-bomb really surprised me. Like, <laughs> I, I loved it um, because because that's a side. Like I said, because we asked me like he's like so I knew something was coming. Cause he's like, what type of audience we got? And I was like, um, uh -oh. like so what you want to say? Cool. Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> this is was like, oh man, hold up, got somebody just uh, did something. Every day you can wake up to life is a great day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's I true. Agree. It's man. true. But some days it's hard to remember that. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. So I'm gonna ask you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I have a friend who says, you know, uh, just wait. Let the first words out of your mouth be thank you. And uh, I, I, I try to remember that. And the days I remember to do it, I have a big smile on my face. I was like, oh yeah, thank you. Just thank you. I don't know who I'm thanking or what I'm thanking them for, but it fills me with joy. That's good. That's that's good to hear. Oh man, so this is turning into like a motivation, motivational session and a whole bunch Let's of other stuff. Let's so, do it. Motivate the whole I know, right? So I the funny thing about this question I'm about to ask you is is so many layers to it because I wrote the question down, but then I tried to go through old interviews you did to make sure like this wasn't gonna be a question that everybody asked you. So that's why I tried to make sure when I wrote down this wow, question. Wow, you are doing your homework. How yeah, I, 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 <laughs> trust me, <laughs> trust me. But um, I don't remember the interview, but you harped on this so eloquently that I loved it. And um, I was going to get into something dealing with this because of you and Veronica Taylor and when y'all did y'all panel for Fayetteville Comic Con because what? of something that I wonder how it has affected you. But the first question is going to be, has there ever been a role that you've turned down, not because um, like you just said, somebody gave you a role and said, no, I'm good. You just pass it up. Did you, you, did you ever turn down a role that just at some point didn't feel right? Uh, I, I don't turn down roles, but I do turn down auditions. Um, I don't turn down roles because it's work. This is my job. 
And, um, you know, work is work. It doesn't, it, it, I, I feel like that would be just spiritually the wrong thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, my schedule is not so busy that I can afford to turn down work, but blah, blah. Um, I do turn down auditions because once I did a job, there, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of anime pornography. And I said, I would not be a part of it. And they talked me into doing, um, they said, well, you'll be a, a secretary that has nothing to do with the actual sex scenes. You'll just be a secretary in a totally standalone scene. Like nobody's naked. It'll be fine. I was like, oh, all right. But um, I did this job and it felt so uncomfortable. And then afterwards I felt like, oh, what if my mom saw this? Mm. <laughs> she wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, there's no chance <laughs> ever. <laughs> but, but so that was my thing. I was like, all right, I'm never going to do another project that I would be afraid my mom would see. No more projects that I wouldn't want my mom to see. So that's... Uh, that's my um, that's my bar. Good, 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 good. I, I, I'm with you. Um, I did. A, I think I did a show one time at. It was at an event. I think it was more so. It is not something that's bad. I think it was like a it's like a hip hop event, but it was more so people wanted to hear the music and the words more than just hearing the words by itself. So when the music's not playing, you hear more talking than you hear yourself performing. And yeah. I stopped doing it. I stopped doing like events like that. Um, there was one story, not not for me, but I had a friend who's big in the poetry game. I'm not gonna say his name because if he was watching this, watching this, he'll kill me. Um, <laughs> he told me about the worst experience he ever did was he took a show. Um, it's supposed to be like I can't remember. What time, I think it's supposed to be like a like a, a R rated event as far as like they can curse and stuff like that. But then found out that the show when he got there was like in a strip club, so. He basically was performing while dancers is dancing, oh. <laughs> and the work he had wasn't coincided with the dancing. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, yeah. so he was like, yeah, never. He's like, I would never. He's like, never again. They got no. to let me know ahead of time. So, yeah, they didn't tell him it. They didn't tell him it. It was like a spot. I think the spot just opened up. They was like, you ever oh, see this no. thing? Just opened up, and they was like, yeah, I got you. Then next thing you know, he gets there, he's like, oh, I already oh, paid me, so yeah. I gotta go do this job. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so uncomfortable. Uh, yeah. Oh. So. Ah, uh, showbiz. It's so yes. glamorous. Yeah, oh God, if people, if people only knew. Uh, so I have two more questions for you. Yes. Um, and by all means, um, we're going to try to leave it for anybody else to um, ask questions. So by all means, get the questions on here. Because when I'm done with the questions, I have no more questions. So audience, you can put questions up there. If you we need out of questions. So I am bringing this question up because... Now I'm going to something I've seen with Veronica Taylor and you, but I have to give the pre, I have to give, I have to build up the story to get to this question. So, two incidents happened in my life dealing with nerd stuff um, that I've seen. Um, one, there was a woman. Actually, I'm gonna tell you about the big one. I'll tell you about the big one because the big one, the one that really holds the weight. So years ago, I have a friend. Him and his family stay in Atlanta. They went to Dragon Con. And they dressed up as a Simpson. It was him, his wife, his son, and their babies. So it was like basically Homer, uh, Marge, I think Lisa, and basically Maggie. Yeah. So they took a picture and they put it on Instagram. Like if you look it up now, you will still see the picture and all the comments that came from it because it was a black family that uh -huh. dressed up as the Simpsons. And uh -huh. literally they had so much backlash for the picture because they said that the Simpsons aren't black. They're to, yellow. Yeah, they're yellow. <laughs> but people would just they say they're white. They're not. So, but um, the one mm -hmm. thing I will say about you and uh, Veronica Taylor, and it, 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 it warmed it warmed my heart because one, I know Veronica Taylor, but I didn't know you at the time. But I know you two are very avid supporters of um, social like like anything that deals with social injustice. You, you like you don't you don't rock with it. Anything that um, that means any race, gender, or creed, you don't rock with it. And I know that with you, you've recently been on like your Instagram and every now and then you'll put up um, pictures, which you knows like race bending. So like anybody that takes a character yeah. um, that's from white, they'll, they've made them black or anything of uh, anything other than white, you post yeah. them. So the question is, how do you feel about, and there's a load of questions. Like, how do you feel about 
um, more of a, like, how do you feel like the Comic Cons or just in general dealing with culture? Um, how do you feel about like more inclusion when it comes to people doing these things? Because I feel, because me personally, I feel like if you are a fan of something, then you should not be demeaned if you're a fan of it. If that's what you want to do, that's what you do. Oh my um, God, of certain, course. Certain spots. But then I know there's a, a caveat to that because I know everything that's been going on with the voice acting lately as well. So that's why I said it's like a loaded thing. So what do you mean? Um, so like with the voice acting, like certain people that was playing like um, characters of color, they now step down from that oh, because wow. of they feel it, they don't want to offend nobody, even though yeah, some. People- no, I don't. I I don't think white people should voice people of color um, at all, and and that and that is changing. I remember I uh, uh, this was like five or six years ago. Um, I was it was like a last minute casting thing. And they sent, they sent me these sides. They're like, we need this back in half an hour. And it was like after hours. Um, and it was for, it was narrating a script, um, you know, like a new sitcom and they wanted a narrator. And the first line was like, when we moved from Iran and I was like, no, I, I can't do this. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not allowed to do this. Wow. And uh, they're like, we're in a hurry. And they don't want an Iranian accent. You can do this. And, and I booked it and I was like, you guys, I can't do this. And I went there and I met the woman who wrote it, who was Iranian and she was originally doing the voiceover. And they were, she herself was like, I didn't want an Iranian voice. I wanted it to sound like an American who's lived here her whole life. So I was standing next to her and she's telling me how to pronounce the names. And I'm like, well, I mean, you know, she wants this, I'll, I'll do it. And it, it was a pilot that never got picked up but it was for Disney. And I knew like, oh my God, this would be a dream job but I knew Disney would never let uh, a white girl do a fart, a Iranian role. You know, it was super bizarre, but anyway, blah, blah. Um, yeah, no, 20 years ago, white people were voicing everything. Thankfully there's more awareness now. And um, you know, I see it all the time. Like it's, it's, suddenly casting directors are like, I don't have any African-American actors. Does everybody send, everybody ask, everybody you know. Um, they're struggling because they haven't cultivated a pool of talent yet, but it's time. It's time. So there's no, white actors have no business voicing people of color right now. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I, pre- yeah. I, pre- I appreciate that. Um, I had a, I, I talked with um, me and the, fir- the first show I did, um, me and Tony Todd kind of, and I could talk about this. Um, this is just from my standpoint, even with like Comic Cons, and I'll be honest with you on Comic Cons. This is no offense to people, but it is kind of a <laughs> it's like no, it's like no, no disrespect, but all disrespect kind of thing. But like even with the cons, like, and I honestly didn't think about it. Like, I love Comic Cons, do not get me wrong. I'm yeah. a Comic Con fan, but if you like think of Comic Cons at the end of the day, as at some point, like you think of all the people they will literally reach out to to do Comic Cons, and it's very few. Um, people of color that they really reach out to to do Comic Cons, and I don't know if it's because they think the name's not as big, or they don't have that much of a draw, which is weird. Wow. Like, so for example, like when Tony Todd, um, when I seen Tony Todd at, um, when I first met him at Raleigh SuperCon, I yeah. think out of the whole pool of people that they brought, I think it was maybe, maybe five or six out of like the thirty something guests. It, like, it's, it is it is weird how they like do the picking. Like I don't know how they do the picking. And like by all means, if, I don't know if it's the name or if they don't feel it's that way. But like in certain aspects, it's like, well, you know, this person's doing something. This person's doing something. These people, are, like, if you reach out to them, they have a fan base. But it's like, yeah, well, so like even like with DC, they do this thing called BlurCon, which literally is like a yeah black. Comic Con event, and I actually did a Nerd Slam panel for um, their second year. I know somebody had to tell me what it was. He was like, "Oh, I'm going to the the Blurred Comic Con." I was like, "The what? The who now?" <laughs> <laughs> I died laughing when he told me what it was. So what is so what is that like? It's so to be honest with you. It's think of a think of a Comic Con. Yeah. A all night arcade and an all night like party all in one for like two or three days like like the dj doesn't like do an after party like for the one day the one day when they say this is the after party for this one day and then the next day that's it like they're probably like playing music all night when it gets like people doing soul train lines and all that stuff like it's fun like the one one year i got a chance to go was fun 
Um, I didn't go to the other one because we didn't get picked up, but I think I was being just I was in my feelings. <laughs> but that but that's me being in my feelings because I know like um with the year we did the nurse lamb there the first time, we only did it one time, but they put us in a small room that probably could hold 70 people because uh-huh. they didn't know how big we we're gonna be. We literally had like 150 people crammed in a 70 people room, standing, sitting down on the floor. Yeah, that was a big event. But then they didn't pick us up next year. We put in early and people was telling them they wanted to see it again. But then yeah. they were saying that they were trying to get different events each year. They didn't want to have like repeating events. So I was like, I yeah. get it. But yeah. But people were asking, like, people were asking for it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah. So, um, and also, so are all the guests black? Um, that year it was it was um who was it? It was Karen. I think it was Karen. Cause I think they only had two two main people because of the hotel. I don't know. Like I said, I think the next year it got bigger. Uh-huh. But they had um Karen Ashley, who was the Yellow Ranger oh, and Power Ranger. I think nice. it was Power Ranger, Power Rangers, the Ninja and the Turbo. I think that's what I think she was. I think. Uh, yeah. And then they had um. One like an underrated um actor that I know has done some great movies named Kevin Gravo. He um basically was have you ever seen Underworld? Mm-mm. Okay, so Underworld was this movie basically um vampire falls in love with a guy, he ends up becoming a wolf. So then they talking about inter interspecies dating, and he literally yeah. wrote the wrote the comic book for it. They picked it oh, up nice. and he um was this like the big black like a big black uh werewolf in it, but he also did voice acting as well because he played Black Beetle and um, Young Justice and in other um, TV shows as well. So, but yeah. yeah, so yeah, that's what, that's the guess they never had. And then the year after that, I know they had Estelle, who played I think Garnet from Steven Universe. All she right. was last year and a couple other people. So I think their whole key is just it's not literally for black people. It's 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 every it's everybody who wants to come that loves cons, but yeah. it's just put on by the proprietors of black person. So and they just the whole term blurred black nerd. It's so good. So yeah, so yeah, so that's the the last one I went to when they did that one. So, yeah, so. and then la- I think the other year I was gonna try to go again. I got picked up for Raleigh Supercon, which they moved to December now. If we're gonna have it, so because we're supposed to do a nurse land for that, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it's scheduled for December. Yeah, they moved it to December. Um, as of right now, it's on schedule for December, but we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah. I mean, what are your numbers like? Um, when it comes to nurse land, it's it's different. No, I mean, I mean for COVID down there. Um, we're, I Are think we're, le- we're level, we're level right now. I was going down, but we're level. So mm-hmm. we just opened up the phase 2.5 by October 2nd. We'll know if we go to phase three, which kind of mm-hmm. opened up a little bit more, um, yeah. which is why we couldn't do, um, the con in October that we wanted to do because yeah. we're opening up so late. So, yeah, we're kind of, things are, things are okay in LA going down slightly, but it's still, it's still bad. Yeah. It's, 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 it's. Oh, so my last question for you, even though yep. I know you're having a ball, <laughs> I feel like if you come to I can do this all day. Do I have yeah. to make I feel like if you come to Fayetteville, it's gonna be a good time. So oh um, we're gonna have a blast. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna have to make sure they let me do your panel. <laughs> do we have to do a panel? We'll just hang out. Can we just yeah, go? Ahead? Right. Yeah, we can do that. I'm sure you come to Fayetteville. You, you enjoy it. Have a blast. Um, last question. Um, with everything that you're doing, every setback that has happened, not because of your choosing, but because of the pandemic. And how it makes things a little bit more hard for you and just artists in general because of the pandemic doing work. What what would you like to see as far as the new way of working, I guess, post-pandemic? Because let's be honest, things will not be the same. So what are you hoping for once the I hate this way, but when the smoke clears, what are you hoping would be, I guess, the the new way of doing things? Yeah, you know, um, I I actually like uh, working from home, which is weird. As much as I crave a sense of community, I uh, my here's my wish list. I want to work at home on anime stuff because this is an easier commute, and it's usually just me and one engineer anyway. So I'm fine with that. Um, but I also would like more work in original animation so that I can be with a group of people doing a, a show together. Um, so that's like my vision work, you know, I gotta, I gotta keep doing my affirmations, uh, to get that kind of work. 
And um, I really want to do more conventions because I love meeting people. I'm, I really miss that connection. That's, uh, that's just so, so much fun and so satisfying. I mean, it's, I, I, don't get me wrong. I'm loving doing all this stuff online too. I'm amazed at, at the market for it and, and how cool it is. Um, but I want to give hugs, you know? <laughs> really? Yeah, that's me. I, I miss the stage right now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, I just did a, so September 30th is when it come out. So I could go ahead and tell everybody September 30th is when it come out. So I did an event for UNC Pembroke, which is a college in North Carolina. Uh -huh. And basically it's called the Front Row, the Front Row um, online series. So basically they reached out to artists in the area and you literally perform on their big stage with no audience. So mm -hmm. like, Wow, it, that's brilliant. I, I, so um, I know that feeling because like I was performing and like in my own head, it was weird because in my own head, I'm talking to the camera like it's people. <laughs> and I'm yeah. thinking like when I get done, there's people clapping, but it's just like that feeling of performing. Because even with this, like performing online is, it's good because it's an outlet, but it's, it's, you have to literally channel the energy you want that you're not getting. And that's not, it's not a bad thing. But it just lets you know how much art as an artist you appreciate those things. And I think more so now than ever, people will get a better appreciation for the arts in these conventions and things. Yeah. Like that. Because when it's when it's shut down everything, you didn't have no concerts, performance venues aren't open, and you can't go to cons like you want to, and you can't meet the stars like you want to unless you're doing it virtually. And yeah, it's not, and it's fun, but it's not the same. No, no. So, no. And I want to go, I want to go to museums. I want to yeah. go to museums. I want to go to shows. I want to, yeah. And we will, we all yeah. will. And I want the earth not to be burning. Oh God. I'm, <laughs> I'm okay. So I'm, wait, I'm waiting on this meteor to pass by November. That's supposed to be supposedly coming here for the election. <laughs> so um, I'm waiting. Wait, on that Is there a meteor coming too? Oh my God! Yes, I have to. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna find the link and I'm gonna like inbox it to you because they they brought the link up back in August, early August. There's like scientists said there's a meteor that's gonna pass by two days before the election. I was like, I'm done. I'm out of here. They're like, I like so it was a bad. So I said it was a bad day buying this because I feel like <laughs> I feel <laughs> like if I would have got that, none of this would be happening right now. So it's. What 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 the hell was that? <laughs> mini gauntlet. Is that mini a monkey's paw? Yeah, no, mini gauntlet, infinity gauntlet. Wow. Big one, but this is my mini desk one. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I thought um, it was monkey's paw. Do you remember that horrible story of the monkey's paw? Oh my god, yes, I know. Uh, I've I've seen renditions of that whole story. That creeped oh. me out. That's creeped me out since childhood. I'm like, why do they tell kids that? You. You know what? You know what? You know what books you Careful what you wish for. <laughs> what a horrible way to live your life. If you, you know wish what? something, it'll come back, but horrible. I know, right? You know what books used to scare me when I was younger, but I read them now and it's like, oh, that was a fun story read again. Um, so <laughs> they when they were promoting scary stories to tell in the dark, I literally <laughs> went to Barnes and Noble to see if they had all three books and I bought them like <laughs> to have them again, just to have them like all Wait, three. Was scary stories in the dark? I yeah, don't know. Scary in the dark. Oh my God! Oh, you really called that? Say that again. Yeah, scary yeah, stories. How do scary I not know? Stories in the dark. They're like maybe each book has maybe like twenty or twenty-two short stories. It's awesome. Like it's awesome. Like I encourage you to buy that book. Like all it's, right. It's like you look at it now as an adult and like you like yeah these stories like some of the stories you'd be like oh yeah I wouldn't want that to happen but <laughs> it's just real quick stories and you'd be like oh that was pretty neat and then they did a movie <laughs> about it which the movie was okay. It was like, cause they didn't go all in. Like I thought they was gonna make it an anthology, but they made like a whole movie that tied around stories and it kind of threw off the gotcha the, the horror anthology, so to speak. So huh. All right, I gotta check those out. Oh, hold up, real quick. All right, all right. I, I gotta go. Oh, okay. We got another endorsement. Oh, Excellent. you just have people saying they found the series. I guess people are looking at it. <laughs> nice. So here's what's about to happen, guys. Um. Megan Hollings Head. Thank you so much for being on the show. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for having me. This was such a pleasure. Uh, thank you everybody for watching and thanks for your questions. Oh, not I'm a problem. So I'm so lucky. 
Lucky for what? Like, I'm lucky that you did the show. Like, like I'm seriously. Well, you invited me. I got to have this fun conversation. What a good life. Right. <laughs> Is there anything you would like to tell the people before um, we end the show? Um, be safe. Wear your mask. Um, say thank you when you wake up. Yeah. And also follow her on Instagram at that handle right there. Look right there. Right there. Um, <laughs> again, thank you so much, guys. Um, real quick before I get off of here. Because, oh, you got some thank yous coming in. Look at that. Uh, thank you, Lamel. So shout out to Lamel. Lamel um, has a podcast called Scary Crits, where she talks about anything that deals with horror. And trust me when I say Ooh. her horror, I promise you. You can look it up on, what is it? Let's see. It's on, it's on Spotify, SoundCloud, a whole bunch of other stuff. Yep. It's awesome. It's awesome. They just, they just did their second episode. They just started, but it's awesome. I, I love their show. Very cool. Yeah, I have, I have her on a show coming next month, uh, another show I do. And we're going to talk all horror because it's October. So, uh, oh, so right. real, Good real quick before I get off here, um, for anybody still watching, um, you heard us kind of talk about our poetry festival that was going on. So um, this is all I'm going to do. Ways to watch the festival next week. You can go and look up both of those pages. Um, you can look up the Southeast Regional NC Poetry Festival community page on Facebook. And the 2020 Southeast Regional North Carolina Poetry Festival event page, because we will be streaming all the events, not only on Facebook, but on YouTube as well. And you can look it up on YouTube right there, following that link. Y'all keep me busy, and I appreciate y'all. Y'all are <laughs> busy, and I appreciate y'all. Um, I will say this, and then we're gonna wrap the show up. As you heard this artist, and you heard us like talking about life in general, do know that. As artists, we appreciate all the work that we do, but we cannot do this work without your support. So please keep going out there supporting the artists. Please keep um, find out your artist friends are doing something. Support those artist friends because a lot of your artist friends are in the same bind as the, the famous artists that are doing things. And I am always keen to say support your artists, your local artists, while they're still local because they will remember who, who did not support them when they get big. I'm just, <laughs> I'm putting, I'm just putting that out there. Yeah. I'm putting that out there. That's just that's just real life, and that's how we see it. So thank you guys. Once again, this is Megan Holling's head. I'm LJ Bowens. This was Art to Heart. We love y'all, and always remember purpose over popularity. Take care, guys. We love you. Bye.